It's time again for another Q&A video. Thanks to all of you that took to Twitter and asked your questions. I try to get through as many as I can in this video. Excuse me, video. For those of you that want to participate in future Q&A videos, maybe get your question answered by yours truly. You got to follow the show on Twitter. And then when I ask for questions, you give them. It's that simple. And I'm trying right now to do these Q&As on a weekly basis. So let's dive right in. Sung Goshwaku starts us off. After all these years, I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, fuck it, I don't care. Uh, a non-wrestling fan agrees to watch all segments and matches from start to end of one of these storylines in an attempt to become a lifelong friend. Which do you choose? The Mega Powers, Austin versus Vince, or the Bloodline? I'm going to take Hogan and Savage out because I don't know that that'll work as well with a modern fan trying to get into it. So we got to narrow it down to Austin, Vince, and then the Bloodline. Uh, Bloodline's been a great story. Roman's really shined quite a bit, and other people have benefited tremendously from it. Uh, but it, it's probably got to be Austin, Vince. There were so many layers to that. Austin's one of the biggest baby faces of all time. Vince McMahon is the greatest heel in professional wrestling history. And if anybody, I mean anybody, ever tells you that there's a bigger heel, a better heel in wrestling history than Vince McMahon, they are a moron. There is no other opinion to have. You can have different opinions about different things. Who's the best babyface? Who's the best wrestler? Who's the best talker? Blah, blah, blah. There is only one acceptable answer for who is the biggest heel in wrestling history. So I'm going to trust that heel heat. I'm going to trust the superpower that was Austin in 97 and 99. Give me Austin versus Vince. Dalek of Chaos. Why does Impact Wrestling refuse to die? Did Dixie put a curse on him? Is it the slap nuts Memphis mid-card piece of crap? I don't even remember what the rest of the fucking question. What did you ask? It doesn't even fucking matter. Because fuck Jeff Jarrett. That dumb dit from Dixie. It does just stubbornly hang on, doesn't it? It just will not die. It refuses to die. And if it didn't suck so bad, it'd almost be redeeming in its own way. But it is just that irrelevant company that won't go away. MC17 Clark. Were you ever a Ninja Turtles fan growing up as a kid in the 80s? If yes, tell us a little bit about it. I certainly was. Hell yeah, I was. I even went to see the movie, the first movie, opening night at the theaters on a Friday night off at the old Machesney Park Mall in Illinois. Yeah, that's, a, that's back of what it was at 89, I think it was, right? I think it was 89. Yeah, and it was either 89 or 90. Yeah, I went that first weekend. Yeah, so yes, I was definitely a Ninja Turtles fan. I don't know what else you want me to tell you about it other than back then, that was a really big fucking deal. The Turtles were fucking amazing like they were hot they were everywhere right yeah they they had a couple year run where they were they were that shit man splash bro kieran who do you think was worse for wcw jim hurd or vince russo this kieran is an excellent question not as excellent of a question as asking where ray ray lewis's bloody white suit is uh but a really good question nonetheless and I know the recency bias is going to point towards Vince Russo, and there's a lot of reasons to not like Russo, I'm sure. But I think you've got to go Jim Hurd. Like, Jim Hurd was so bad that the trajectory of that company changed almost automatically. He ran Ric Flair off. And you could say, well, Russo helped kill the WCW. Nah, he just accelerated an inevitability. So I'm going to go with Jim Hurd. Craig HNIC asked, is Brock Lesnar a bigger all-time great than John Cena? No, nah, I, I think it's interesting that Brock's run now has lasted over a decade, where his first run where he was supposed to be the next big thing lasted all of about two damn years, right? From the night after WrestleMania in 2002 to WrestleMania 20, and he's been around now since the Raw after WrestleMania 28. And... It's a crazy how much better that run has been than the old run. Uh, but nah, he's, he's, he's not at the Cena level. As much as I don't like Cena, as much as I think he did a lot of damage to the company, as much as I think the propaganda got to a lot of people's fucking heads with him, he's not higher up on the all-time list than Cena. That's crazy. Dexter C73, is LA Knight more popular than Cody Rhodes, and should the WWE push Knight instead? I think the answer to both of those questions 
is interesting. I think the first one is possibly yes. Sounds like it. To the second question, eh, I don't know. Why does it have to be either or? Why can't you push both? That would be my retort. Chrysler official. How much can LA Knight benefit from a feud with The Miz? Can we see it as a positive that WWE decided to pair him with somebody like The Miz? You absolutely fucking can. Because Miz is one of their rock solid guys. You even saw it kind of referenced in the promo on Monday night, right? But I think about that a little differently. They put LA Knight with The Miz because that's the type of feud that can help them really determine what they've got in LA Knight and how comfortable it's LA Knight because they know what they have in The Miz and they can trust The Miz and I trust The Miz after all these years. They didn't put him there by accident. That means something. That is the most encouraging thing to me, even more than him winning the Battle Royal at SummerSlam. Him going into a program with The Miz might be a sign of like, hey, you know, we got something here. So I, I think it absolutely could be a huge positive for it. A poor Shankar won. The reason we are all wrestling fans to this day Hulk Hogan will be turning 70 in a couple of days. Will there be a video explaining what he has meant to the business and so many generations of wrestling fans? I would have loved nothing more to do that. You know, and I would love to be in this spot where I could be the kind of old angry wrestling fa fan yelling at the clouds and extolling the virtues of Hulk Hogan and the training, the prayers and the vitamins and the backstage politics and that doesn't work for me, brother. But he created an environment, put himself in a spot where I can't fucking do that, unfortunately. And that really sucks. So I would not expect anything special. I would not. You might expect a Hogan WCW pay-per-view review this week. That's a possibility. Maybe like Road Wild 98. H Review 73. Besides 1997, do you consider 98 to be the best year of the Attitude Era in terms of storylines, characters, memorable moments, etc.? And what was your paper, favorite pay-per-view from that year? My favorite pay-per-view from that year was WrestleMania 14. And yes, I think that was the best year of the Attitude Era was 98. 97 is my favorite year, right? And even then, the Attitude Era really only technically officially launched in December of 97. Uh, but 98 is the best to me. Brian Leslie, do you think Solo should be the one to end Roman Reigns' run in the WrestleMania main event next year? No, I don't. I don't look at Solo and see that dude potential, so no. Potential main event opponent at a Survivor Series or a Royal Rumble for Roman Reigns? Absolutely. WrestleMania? Nah, that's a different level, and I'd say no, son. Andreas underscore Byron, on your pro wrestling grading scale from F to A+, plus, where would you rank RVD? However high enough I needed to to piss fucking Mikey and Tony the hell off. Tasteless Tony T and Mr. Rout hated her on VN Dam. They'd be like, Man, Dan, Dan, the hell is taking so? <laughs> I used to love tweaking them about RVD and how awesome RVD was. <laughs> However high I needed to rank them to piss those guys off is exactly what the fuck I would do. <laughs> Gambit 190. Out of all these people, who do you think is the biggest missed opportunity when it comes to never holding the WWE title? Owen Hart, the Billion Dollar Man, Mr. Perfect, or Roddy Roddy Piper? I think it's Owen Hart. When you look at the time, when you look at the place that WWE was at, I really felt like they should have had Owen win that strap at some point in time in 94. I really do. I could make an argument that those other characters, DiBiase, Mr. Perfect, Roddy Piper, were fine never having the title, but Owen really could have used it. But I'm sure Brett said, that doesn't work for me, brother, eh? MFA2, do you ever see WWE building a physical Hall of Famer museum? If so, where would you put it? You'd either put it in Stamford, Connecticut, or you put it in New York City. The, the reality is, is these Hall of Fame, physical Hall of Fame, they sound like a great idea, but they're not really money makers. So why would the WWE ever feel the need to do that? If you did it on your campus that you already have, maybe it makes some sense or do something like that. I just, unless you said like they put it in Tampa, Florida, but eh, why would they, why would they go through the expense? I just don't see it. Low again, Osborne. I've been watching your channel for 10 years. Bless your heart. Thank you for that, Mr. Osborne. What's your favorite match based on in-ring work? 
And you hope that all the guys from back in the old days of the OTR Ascent Off the Rope show are doing well. I'm sure they are. Um, I haven't talked to them in a little while, and I need to do that. As far as favorite match ever based on in-ring work, um, it might be Taker HBK at 25 in terms of pure ring work. It might be. It might be. But then I could also say like Hogan Warrior at six when you look at like that was a physique big man's match and how well that came off. Like that was a hell of a good good match. Uh, Degenerate asks, so all in at Wembley supposedly surpassing WrestleMania three. Is that legit or is that Meltzer and the IWC journalist propaganda? I think it's propaganda and it doesn't fucking matter. If AEW does 90,000, who gives a shit if it did more or less than WrestleMania 3? 90,000, 85,000, the goal is 90,000, but even if they do 80,000, like, that's phenomenal. And good for them. And I'm fucking happy for them. And it'd be nice if wrestling could do more gates, more shows that drew that type of audience. KOG715, who would you have go over in the Ultimate Survivor Series dream match of AEW's Young Lions? Let them roar! Sting, CM Punk, Billy Gunn, Christian, and Brian Danielson versus WWE's Breakfast Club of Triple H, Randy Orton, John Cena, Batista, and Sheamus. Well, the best politician around, Brian Danielson, would win the match for the Breakfast Club because he's going to join forces. Of course, that's the only possible outcome. He's going to politic his way into that spot, brother. Ah, what a match that would be. Could you imagine just the meetings behind the scenes determining who's going over? That doesn't work for me, brother. Well, uh, uh I don't think that's a good idea, uh, uh I think we should go over. Uh, oh, my God, it'd be fucking amazing. Fuck a match. Let me see that. Super J610. How would you feel if the current story with the acclaimed and Billy Gunn ended in Billy Gunn winning the AEW title? Now there, Super J610, you're thinking box office, baby. That's how you do business. I love it. I love it. A underscore score coos. Why doesn't MJF ever get heat for the AEW ratings decline since he's been the champion? I haven't paid as much attention to the ratings lately, but I saw some recent things and I thought some of the quarter hour segments with like him and Adam Cole actually popped ratings a little bit on Dynamite. And collision. Am I wrong there? Um, yeah, the overall ratings haven't been fantastic for sure with MJF as a champion, but I, f I swear I've seen some recent instances where he's helped pop a little bit of the rating and help it rebound a little bit in the course of the show. And Under the Mat show is going to close us out by asking pass, fail, and expel. Psycho Sid softball class, Scott Steiner's math lessons, and Jimmy Uso's school of guys that can drive drunk too good. <laughs> you gotta pass Scott Steiner's math class. You gotta fail Psycho Sid's softball class because there can only be one Psycho Sid and you expel Jimmy Uso's school of driving because I've driven with a, ridden with enough drunks over the years. I don't need to fucking experience that again. How dare you make me choose between Steiner and Sid Gabio! Anyways, thank you everybody for your questions. I always enjoy these. Look forward to doing another one next week. Some more videos coming up over the next few days, so stay tuned.